Hello there, it's Jay Kubasek and Stuart Ross. We are the co-founders of Digital Experts Academy and we're here in London at Heathrow. Beautiful weather, it's kind of cold and rainy actually. And uh, right now we have a mastermind going on inside with uh, some of our members. It's actually one of our platinum mastermind events and we want to give you a sneak peek behind the scenes. We also want to sit you down and talk to you about creating your digital life as well and share with you some of our vision and some of the process behind what we do here. So come on inside and take a look, let's go. Yeah, I mean, because uh, a strap plan, or it's actually, Jay inspired that. He mentioned earlier the next generation, you know, inspiring the next generation. So I think it's like, uh, but building yeah, through lives, empowering yeah, exactly. individuals to kind of leverage the power of the internet. Yeah, yeah. 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 A little bit wordy, but yeah. I like it. I like so where you're going. Concept, so we haven't yeah. quite finalized, um, and then either replacing you know, individuals. Um, well, you could even drop the make money part, empowering individuals to leverage the power of the internet. So welcome back. Uh, we've got Guy and Ilan Ferdman here. And thank you guys for hanging out an extra day or two here. Absolutely. Absolutely. It was an incredible event. You know, we want to talk to you today, not just about creating your digital life, like I mentioned earlier, but what it takes and why we're so passionate about helping people do that. You know, people ask us all the time, you know, what do you do? Why are you doing it? And at the end of the day, we're just so passionate about helping people live their best life in this lifetime and giving them those choices and those options. So that's what we want to talk about here and share with you some of that vision. And, and maybe you can see yourself reflected in that. So Elon, why don't you talk about what was it that drove you guys? What was the impetus behind your decision to reinvent yourselves? Because yeah. you came from the banking world, the yeah. financial world in New York City. Yeah. What was it that drove you to the point of completely recreating yourselves in your, in your 30s? Well, uh, we shared this a little bit in the room with everyone there, uh, so we'll share it with you guys. We obviously went through the collapse of the economy and for the first time realized that we wanted a choice. You know, we realized how temporary everything was and that the control was really not in our hands. Mm -hmm. I mean, after all, I built a bank and in eight years it disintegrated in my hands. I literally watched it evaporate. Uh, and I never wanted that to happen again. So I was searching for, well, what skill set and what thing could I learn that no matter what happened, I would have that. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't have to rely on the economy or another boss or another partner. And I think that's what drove us to really master becoming a digital entrepreneur, mm -hmm. knowing that that is where the world is actually going, mm -hmm. and I wanted to be on that wave. Mm -hmm. And that's, I mean, for me, at least that's what it was. I mean, I know I was just really clear about uh, the mission, like what I wanted to provide for people, and I knew that uh, as far as like traditional sales skills were concerned, I knew how important those were. I felt I had developed those really well, mm -hmm. but I like never enjoyed it. You know, it's like like networking events. I, I mean, I like it. I, I think I like it a little bit more now because of that. In what we do, there's people who are very passionate about what they're doing. They're providing service for people. That was always really important for me. But I would go to these like networking events. I didn't really want to shake anyone's hand. That's what he was saying in the airport as well. Just like had that like that. It's like that icky to, feeling. Yeah. yeah, I like collecting cards that I never used and like cold calling <laughs> and all that traditional sales stuff was just really unattractive to me. And it became clear to me that. Uh, getting online was the place to be because I wanted to communicate something to the world uh, and I knew that if I was just doing that picking up the phone this is going to take a long time like how am I going to fulfill on a mission mm -hmm. of impacting a lot of people and how and, amazing were those people in that room exactly and then when you're in there and you're you're providing that kind of quality you know for people and you see them waking up and you see them inspired and like they're mm -hmm. they're transforming and not slowly very quickly about yeah. their mindset you're like, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. So when we got started, that's what it was for me. I just wanted to see how I could communicate one message to a lot of people very quickly, inspire people, help them transform their lives in whatever capacity that was, whether it was business or with their relationships with their family. It didn't matter to me, but I knew that these tools would give me the access point for that. And that's what I always think about. It's not so much about the money, it's not so much about the marketing, it's that when you're studying these things, it gives you access right. to something. Options, yeah. exactly. exactly. So go back, you said eight years building a bank? Is eight you guys years working? building eight years. a bank. Kids. Talk a little bit about what that was like to have you know, eight years of something, you know, and I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this. Did yeah. my face just turn really white because I just <laughs> relived that entire moment in like yeah. two seconds. Don't, don't need to re-traumatize <laughs> you, but. Yeah. 
a lot of us have had our asses yeah. handed to us. Yeah. 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 But this, this economy. Before you go on to that though, there's just a point that I want to make is that one of the things that I loved about you guys when I first met you is immediately I could understand that your purpose was to help other people. Yeah. Yeah. And do you know why I respect that so much? And it's, I don't even if respect is even the right word, but I remember when I first started looking at this whole digital economy and doing business online, it was from such a selfish perspective, mm. like just being honest. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. From my point of view, it's like I remember looking at my computer screen and the only thing that I was focused on is how can I change my life? Right. Mm. And you know, I know you guys spent years long before doing online marketing, like studying personal development yeah. and all of these things. Why do you think you guys came into this industry after losing everything with that intention so early on, even though you knew you had to rebuild yourself, so yeah. you were so purpose driven? Because that intrigues me because it took me four years. So I didn't have any of the skill set at all of what they knew, but I knew I could speak their language. And I came from a banking world where people were cutthroat and yep. it was just ugly, you know? And I, and I owned a hundred million dollar bank and no one would even talk to me. It was like that kind of thing. And here I come in and top guys are, you know, like, like Jay, when I first met him, made himself accessible right. and was like, how can I help you? And I was like, am I in a dream world? Yeah. Like, like, this is not real. So I knew we had the background. Mm. All I knew is with a few little tweaks and, and mm -hmm. learning the basics, you, we, yeah. we had a really you good... You took your life skills. Yeah. You took your life skills and you applied it to it. And, and yeah. But I think that right. mindset contributes to a lot of your success and the reason why you succeeded so far. Yeah. Um, because 100%. from my perspective, I just remember like going to bed at night, like all I cared about was me. Yeah. And to be in a situation where I am today, where mm. I've kind of learned those lessons, few years later, yeah. um, it's probably 2010 that I first kind of woke up to yeah. this whole concept of helping others. There's, there's uh, nothing other wrong people with starting with that way. No, no, I, it just intrigues me. It intrigues I, think it's, me. I think for us it's funny always because we, like it doesn't matter who I've spoken to in this industry, that's a very like common story. Yeah. I got in, I had success fast, I made a lot of money, I felt empty and now I had to find like my purpose because humans without purpose, is, yeah. like, mm. we don't function well. But for Elon and I, we had found purpose inside of like coaching other people. I loved it. And I always knew myself to be the best version of myself mm -hmm. while I was being of service to others. So I saw a great you get from that. Oh, yeah. Best. Yeah. Fulfillment. Now we had never made money doing that. But when I came into the industry, I'm like, whoa, people are making money being of service to other people. I didn't even know that existed. So when I got into the industry, I was thinking to myself, okay, I know I have the mentality. I have the right mindset to be successful in this industry. In fact, I felt like I had more developed mindset than most people, even who were at the top you know, the top of the whatever mountain. And I said, as long as I had the tools, if someone would teach me the tools, I had the right tools, I know, I mean, I knew with certainty that I would be successful. So we kind of did it backwards from 99% yeah. of people. Because yeah. I mean, most people get into the industry, mm. becoming an entrepreneur becomes their vehicle for looking, you know, looking at the development of self. Mm. And we had been really developed. So for us, it was like, give me the tools, I'll be great. And I always think about it like, uh, if, if you're like a really great engineer, mm but you don't know how to build a house because no one ever showed you like a hammer or something like that. No practice. So like you know how to like structure everything, but you don't know how to like build the foundation really because you don't, you're not like a hands-on person. So now I feel like I'm the engineer and the builder, you know, like it gave me access to that. And that's really what it provided for me. Now granted, again, most people come in, they don't realize how important the mindset aspect of this is. And that's actually what I love about what we're doing, about what we're talking about, what's happening in there, is that we're, we're doing much more than like learn marketing, which is not that sexy. You know, we're, we're developing m proper mindsets to right. allow people to <clears throat> now build on that foundation and then build a business on top of that mindset. Because without that mindset, there's no foundation. Yeah, that's how I feel about it. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's always been about working with what you have. You know, working all you can with, work with what you have. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I grew up on a farm, and with, in, in farming, you have minimal control over the variables. Mm -hmm. You can't control the weather. Yeah. Obviously, you can't control the costs of your, your inputs, like your chemicals and fertilizers, seed, that kind of stuff. You know, land, rent, competition, equipment costs. You can't control any of that. You can control maybe 5%, 10% mm. of the variables. Mm. And what you get really good at is working with what you have. Yeah. And it forces you, being a farmer forces you to focus exclusively on what you have control over. Mm. And then by creating a bifurcation or a separation, mm -hmm. the stuff that you can't control, everyone has to deal with that. Right? Yeah. It's no different online. We all have 
the same number of hours in a day. We all have access to the same internet, the same Google, right? Yeah. But the part that we can control is ourselves. Yeah, our response. And, and our response, yeah. right? And what I'd like to know, uh, and, and I'd actually like to go back real quick before we go too far down that road. Yeah. You, eight years building bank, um, that crumbles, you decide to reinvent yourselves. Right. Obviously, you chose the digital economy, a digital type of business, because of all, all of the obvious reasons, but how was that transition? T talk about how you used the existing life skills that you had from your previous jobs, because really all of our members were relying on them, taking their existing life skills yeah. and applying them in new ways. Yeah. So talk a little bit about that, how you were able to take your existing life skills and, and really build on what you have, because that's all, all you have is yourself and your personality at the yeah. end of the day. And, I th and just not to cut you off, but I think what was fascinating this weekend, you know, in that room is when you learn how to do this, you're going to attract certain people to you, whatever your life skill sets are, right? So Guy and I have, have certain skill sets that we've developed, whether it's personal development or through sales or business and growth. You know, you guys have your own set of skills. Um, what I found fascinating is this is like a magnifying glass for those skills. Every single one of those people walked away feeling like they had a profound message to share with people, no matter what they came from. And we had, I mean, you were telling me there was like ex-policemen in there and truck drivers and like attorneys. Qual uh, qualified as a GP like seven days ago. Wow. So wow. that's what I'm saying. It's like all over the map and... We all have something to offer. Sure. Every one of us. Whether we believe it or not, we all have something unique. You know, you were a farmer for crying out loud. And here we are sitting, right? So I just feel like we can rebrand ourselves and recreate ourselves in this new economy. The old world is, for me, dead. That, to me, when I left that world, I was like, I will never let someone else control my destiny. It's an outdated model. It's an outdated model. So what are you going to do? Are you going to survive in this new world and just like live that same nonsense day to day, you know, 20 year commute, hope that your boss doesn't fire you, do just enough not to get fired, get that, or do you, you have a choice. Deal with the politics, yeah. the bureaucracy, all the crap. The and now like, jockeying for position, all of that stuff. I yeah. feel like, you know, in two, three days, these people just woke up to yeah. having a choice. I also want to point out how much less feasible having a traditional job is. I'm not saying like it won't be around, that there will always be a need for service people and this kind of thing. Maybe not, who knows, with technology, God only knows where that's going to yeah. go. But there, there's not a lot of feasibility. I mean, in the last 20 years in America, how much of incomes rose? Not that much, like definitely below inflation. Prices have skyrocketed. It's extremely expensive to buy cars, drive cars, you know, maybe future technologies might change that, but commuting is a dying art. People don't... Yeah, and the value of human labor is it. plummeting. Yeah. I mean, you can... Everyone's going off outsource. outsource. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. And my yeah. personal belief, and look, I'm no economist, I'm no person, you know, I just, I, I read news. Thanks, Bernanke. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have my opinions, like everyone else's, doesn't mean they're true or they're valid, but it's what I believe, right? You know, most people are not happy in their job. I think that most people, if given the choice, would get out of the career that they're in, would build something for themselves, yeah. not work for somebody else's dream. And even most CEOs, that's not even their dream. Mm -hmm. Like if you own an accounting office, you're telling me your dream is to crunch numbers. I don't, I don't believe that. Yeah. Maybe for some. Maybe for some. Really good point <laughs> on that though. Uh, so, Stuart actually made a really good point this morning. Stuart, maybe you could just tell the story really quickly. Um, you know what you wanted to be when you were a kid. Mm. You know what you, you mentioned this morning. Your mom mm. would ask you. You know what do you want to be when you grow up? Well, I think um, yeah. I mean that's an important point. Um, even elaborating on what you guys were saying is. I mean the thing that I love so much about the world we live in today, and this is something that is so underestimated by millions of people around the world, mm -hmm. is that we have more choice now than ever. Oh, yeah. I mean the internet kind of changed a few things. <laughs> yeah. We'll agree yeah. on that. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and the reason I was so intrigued about how you came into this industry in terms of, when I say industry, how you turn to the internet with the view of we can help people. Yeah. The reason I found that so interesting is because um, for me now, that's been the last three, four years mm. of my life. It's mm. been like, I wake up every day thinking, wow, like I get to help and change people's lives because of the internet. Yeah. But, Going back to what you were saying, when I was a, when I was a, 
a child and people used to say to me, and we've all had it, we all remember yeah, yeah. it. Mm -hmm. um, what do you want to be when you yeah, grow up? I wanted to be a farmer like my dad. Yeah, I wanted to be an attorney. I, well, had, I had no idea. <laughs> and I am exactly the same. You know, that's the crazy thing. Are you an attorney? How'd that go? <laughs> yeah. No. Well, you know, my answer no, if I'm was always like, attorneys, my wife's an attorney. <laughs> we married one. No, 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 no. Disclaimer. But my answer was always like, I don't know. I don't know. And I was like the odd one out. You know, most people did. I want to be a policeman. I want to be a soccer player, a football yeah, player, yeah. or you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, and uh, for me, I always, I, I remember thinking back, not just as a child, but even in my teens, into my early twenties, still not really knowing Same. what I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think the profound difference between the times that we live in now with the digital economy is that it's no longer really about what we want to be. It's about who we want to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who we, we want to become, brilliant, and not locked into a box that a traditional education that gives you a traditional job yep. and a traditional industry would lock you into. Because that, if if our audience has any um, any bearing on this, or, or if our audience is any indication of this, is probably a better way to put it. There are doctors next door here yep. in the next room, masterminding right now. There are truck drivers. There are um, health practitioners. There are. There's a blind um, guy. IT yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A property yeah. investing blind guy. Yeah. He's he's a huge dog, by the he's way. Got his, he's got an amazing yeah. dog as well. Beautiful, yeah. There, there is an incredible array of talent and life skills coming from a whole host of vocations and careers and, and yeah. life skills, etc. Every one of them is probably asking themselves, or has asked themselves, as I'm sure our viewers have, what do I want to be when I grow up? Mm. But that... That's a moving target. Yeah. At least it was for me. I mean, I wanted to be a farmer. It still is for us. It still is. It still is. But when you invest X number of years and X number of dollars in an education and then finally get that job, what's happening is people are waking up and realizing, well, hold on, this isn't what I thought it was going to be. Yeah. This isn't what I want. I know for me in my mid-20s, it's like, hold on a minute, Jay. You never really sat. Nobody sat you down and said, here are your options. Here are the choices that you have. I just I always assumed I'd be a farmer like my dad, and that's, I just dreamed of driving the big John Deere tractor. And, and in most and career paths, bureaucracy will change everything. You know, I knew I knew friends who wanted to be doctors, mm -hmm. and it was like really altruistic, and they wanted to be pediatricians. And then you go to medical school, and it turns out that the insurance companies have coded everything. And now you realize, well, I just took out a two hundred thousand dollar loan. If I'm a pediatric, if I'm in pediatrics, I can't even charge enough to pay back my loan yep. for the next twenty five years. And then, boom, your dream is gone, and he has to become an anesthesiologist, which was not even the original intention of why he went to medical After school. After investing all of that time, and that's and you can't money. and you can't know that until you start down that path. And not to get too philosophical, but like, you know, Western philosophy has always been what you're doing is very important. And if you look at the job market, it's all about what you're doing, right? But when you get become into like finance or accounting, it's a very linear path. And the moment you get in there, you feel really confined because there are no choices. It's like my life has to be about this one path. And that's about jostling for position on that corporate ladder, which, which is, is like terrible. everyone, not that I have that much experience in corporate America or corporate Britain, but people above you kicking you in the teeth. <laughs> yeah. You know, kicking your teeth, the people below you pulling on your pant legs. And it's like you're trying to climb this ladder. And, and I think it's scary now, too, because of of that uncertainty people like our parents or maybe even grandparents maybe our parents didn't even have this experience was like you would get a job right they would tell you like get a good job at a good company work there for 30 40 years get your watch get your pension and done but like that doesn't exist anymore well you don't get the watch <laughs> <laughs> you don't um, get the 30 years I, I just want to go back because you said something about um, I actually want to make a really quick point about what I was saying because I didn't get to finish yeah, it. I'm sorry yeah. just keep that yeah, for yourself. So what I was saying about the, like the philosophy is that so we got obsessed with doing in our culture, right? Like so you might be thinking to yourself like oh you know doing like I'll go find the like right what you do I'll go find the right mate and I'll be happy I'll go make enough money and be happy and you'll ask these guys they made more money than probably anybody in this industry or right around there they were empty when they when they got there yeah. there's no purpose in that whatsoever so that is very short lived and it's very disappointing because society has fed you that BS for a long time but I think what's peering through the clouds. 
uh, not in just even our industry or just in our society, is that doing is really not all that important. And I think what this gives you access to, again, like these tools, is it allows you, your being to come out. Because this is a skill set that allows you to be very malleable very quickly. You suddenly don't feel like there's a linear path to get anywhere. You feel like there's this expansion, and you can go in all different directions. And you can ask any one of us the opportunities that come our way all the time. We have choice about what we want to do, who we want to work with, and what that's going to look like. And then we get to sit around and figure out the models and frameworks for that. And that's so interesting because that's all right brain. That's like being an artist. You get to always inject your creativity in this industry, wherein when you're doing, there's no creativity. It's already preset. You do it this way. Yeah, it's when, very linear. You, when you're in a state of being, which is how I feel that we operate, right? Or this industry allows you to operate against very malleable. Your being comes through into everything that you do. So if I'm working with an entrepreneur, or if I'm working with an artist, or if I'm working with somebody who's already an authority in their field, I'm injecting my being more than my doing into what they're doing, and I'm bringing my creativity into their business. And that's what makes that relationship so amazing. Because it's like being with your buddy and like having a drink and like sitting around having a great conversation and creating together. And for me, that's what humans like thrive and they live and they feel alive. And you just don't get that as far as I'm concerned anywhere else. You just don't. Yeah. Well, you, you're, you're, what's your tagline? Waking people up to? Yeah, absolutely. My, my personal mission, waking people up to the choices that every individual has to live their best life. Yeah. And, and the internet gives choices. It's exactly. Really what it does. It makes, instead of your backyard being your playground, yep. or the, the, the park on the corner being your playground, like when you're a kid, you're yep. like, let's go to the playground. Mm. The world becomes your playground. Sure. Gives you options mm. that, you've got the options that are in the box, and then you have the options that come with the territory, mm. and then you have, have the options that you can imagine are just out there, and the internet gives you access to that. Yep. But I want to go back to what you were talking about. Well, before um, you do that, I want to make a point. <laughs> I, want to make, I want to make a point that I think that we really have to like highlight. Um, and the reality is, what we're talking about is learning how to leverage the internet yeah. to yeah. really give yourself the freedom yeah. and flexibility to live life on your own terms. Yeah. And I think that we need to bring it back a bit to like really discuss why why the system is broken. And the well, our government between... is off right now. Just so you just you go back and really? the they, just... <laughs> they, they took off. Yeah. I, I, again, that's really. I, I'm happy you took it there. So I think you're looking at symptoms of the mindset of this model that's been around for so long, this traditional model. And I think when everybody was like obedient if you want to call it that way, because like, you know, for a long time there was a very conservative mindset in the world. There was a lot of obedience around religion and governments, and I know this is going down like a really deep rabbit hole. But my point is, is that when that was happening, then things were working fine. But as people become conscious, we want choice. And, and do you know what? The one thing everybody has in common in this room next to us yes. right now is, and the, the primary reason, if they were honest, why they're here right now, for 99% of people would be quality of life. And I know that's my reason. Some of them have you know, made tons of money yeah, and are just yeah. miserable. Not about that. There are people in there Kids, uh, speaking like, with uh, Bill and Theodore, and he's in, in, in IT, and he makes a multiple six-figure income. Yeah. Mm. Uh, she doesn't work, but they've got, a, they've got a mortgage, two BMWs, two young children. Yeah. They've got this expensive lifestyle, and they're basically treading water. And in their, wow. they're in their late forties, early fifties, I would guess. And they're amazing couple. As well. Amazing <laughs> couple. Amazing couple. But they're they're looking for, uh, just like you said, the internet, the advent of the internet, social media, etc., gives people this level of awareness where you begin to think, "Geez, maybe I do uh, have I remember, options. Maybe I have a choice. Maybe yeah. I don't have to live the life I think I have to yeah. live." Yeah. I mean, I remember how different I felt just knowing that it was possible oh, to live this yeah. digital life. Like yeah. how different, I, my whole, I remember driving to work after watching a few videos online. There weren't so many on at those yeah. days. They didn't stream anyway. Yeah. Uh, they were black and white. <laughs> um, you know, I remember watching like a couple of videos and I'd order some home study courses and DVDs yeah. around like, you know, doing businesses and online businesses and everything else. It was a very different ball game back then. Um, but I remember like going through the motions and I can remember driving to work thinking like, wow, how different would my life be if I just matched my mm. income, but on my own terms? Like for me, that was like enough. I didn't think about being yeah. a millionaire. Yeah. I didn't think about you know, building an empire. I'll be honest, I wasn't even thinking about helping people. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I, I mean, I was just like, wow, imagine earning what I earn right now in my pajamas yeah. from yeah. home. 
I mean, just so you know, I recreated my, I, I recreated more than what I did in eight years offline mm -hmm. in less than two years mm -hmm. in the digital world. Mm -hmm. No, starting with, I kid you not, zero yeah. skill set. So other so, so other than sending an email. So here's the I question. Need. So when you know that there is, you know, back to my, my mission is to wake people up yeah. to this, to this, these options. Wake people up to the choices that they have. Yeah. Once you know that you have a choice, it's almost like you can't go back. Right? right? Yeah. You're yeah. so passionate about that. You can't, <laughs> you know, Why you can't, you can't like, go back. I just, it, you know, what I, it's like I feel like I'm just, obviously I'm not doing this, but grabbing someone yeah. by the yeah. collar. Yeah. Like, we are, like, metaphorically, that's what we're all doing. Yeah. That's what we're I, doing I now. hope that's what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> so I, hope you're, I hope you're shaking me over there. Yeah. You have options. Mm -hmm. Have options for sure. You have options. So I'd like to kind of bring this full circle. You, see, you said, didn't know what I want to be. You still don't know what you want to be. But I think the big distinction for all of us now that we, we now have, same here. So I, I wanted to be a farmer. After that, I didn't know what I wanted to be. Do you know what, though? Before I know where you're going with him. The point I'm going to make immediately is I don't think I'll ever know what I want to be because it's all about who I want right. to be. And, and, who, right. and who gives and a quality you know what about that anymore? I think right. you can stop asking yourself that question. Right. Yeah. But you can Because every yeah. day you could be something completely yeah. different. Absolutely. I change my mind on everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> one minute I want to live in New York, the next minute I want yeah. to be in London. So one, minute, one minute Jay's my best mate, the next minute I hate it. So, if all if, if we're saying that you don't have to pick a box yeah. to live in, you don't have to pick a career, yeah. You can be who you want to be, when when you want to be, yeah. how empowering that is, and how yeah. inspiring that is, and how exciting that is. And that That's has to be just so liberating yeah. for people to know. Mm -hmm. And the internet, because it's a virtual world that's connected, it's, it's all within... It's all within a one degree of separation. I mean, there is nothing that you can't learn by simply typing into Google a question or going to Khan Academy or going to you know, any number of online yeah. resources. Things have changed. Yeah, things have yeah. Changed. and let's summarize this. Like, what we're saying right now is there's a lot of pain out there. Oh, people don't like commuting. People don't like working for a boss. People don't like struggling financially. People don't like being tied to one location. Being people don't like kids. insecurity yeah. of knowing if they're going to even have a job. Yeah. So, you know, we've been discussing for a long time now the pain. Yeah. I think what we need to do is really, let's start to talk about the solution. Okay. You know, because a lot of people will be watching this video and they'll be like, so what, what do I do? Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, well, I mean, I mean, it does, does seem unrealistic. It does seem unrealistic. To frame that, in the past, you had 3% of society working for the 90, sorry. All the way around. Exactly. So in the past, you had 97% of society working for the 3% who owned the businesses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have 3%, call it the top 3%, whatever, mm -hmm. who own the businesses that create the jobs for the 97%. So you have the big group that's reliant on the small group. The small group has jockeyed themselves into a place of power. It's very difficult to build a traditional business. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. the, the success rates are tiny. And expensive. The vast majority of businesses fail. The, the only options that are really available to people are franchise type business models where you basically own your own job mm -hmm. and you have to have you know, multiple six figures, maybe seven figures mm -hmm. investment. So that's not a real viable option to most people. Yeah. Yeah. So what are, what are your options? And, and in that context, Getting an education, five years, ten years, fifteen years, whatever, and then applying, you know, that into a certain trade is a viable option. Yeah. Because that's the way things were, right? That's yeah. the, that's what you had to do back then. Yeah. The problem is people think they still think that that's the way they have to do it. Yeah. They have options. It's good marketing choice. What that is. And today, I mean, if you think about it, it's even not that viable anymore because of debt, because of loans. For, like, this generation of kids that just came out of school are getting jobs to pay for the school that they just got out of. If they can get a if, job. If they can even get a job. But I want to just bring clarity of message to all this because I don't want, you know, the, whoever's watching this, this audience that's going to watch this, to think that we're saying that even this has to be done in any particular way. We're not telling you guys to, you know, like a lot of the messaging in the industry is make money quick. Um you know, like transition out of your job immediately. Like that's what you have to do. And I think what we're trying to, you know, at least portray to you guys is that what, we, what we're about is giving a higher quality of life yep. to everybody who comes in contact with us. That could yeah, be- Before you move on, can yeah. I just say something as well? Sure, is that 
that is like genuinely the thing that gets me out of bed. I, there's nothing that I'm more excited about than knowing that we can improve people's quality of life. Yeah. When you meet people and you look at them in the eyes, like we have today, we Jay and I have pretty much been in tears listening to some of our yeah. students. Us too. Today. We were talking about that. And, and knowing the pain that they have, whether it be that they never see their kids, or whether it be the fact that they're working 90 hours a week, whether yeah. it be the fact that every time they're fighting to get a job, they're being rejected, they're too qualified, they're too old, they're too young, they haven't got enough experience. Yeah. Yeah. People are coming out of university with the same qualifications. You're never good enough. Back to the broken system. But yeah. the point of what I want to make is that that's what gets us out of bed, all yeah. of us, I think. You know, quality of life is something that Real quick, I'm sorry. Is, is drastically underestimated. Yeah. I, I, man, no, no, I'll you out there. No, no, it was beautiful. I, I think that only adds to it. But my, my point here, guys, is you know, you a lot of people have been dangling in front of you that you need to be a millionaire or that you need to transition out of your job. And it's it's not what this is about. Even if you come into this space and you get these skills and you only make $60,000 a year, if you're making $60,000 a year now, I promise you $60,000 a year doing what we're doing equals freedom. Equals retirement. It's equals retirement. <laughs> you know what? Sixty thousand dollars a year in Thailand is a lot of money. It's a lot of money. <laughs> you can move to Thailand, yeah, so. but you'll have that choice, and that's the whole point. Is look, we haven't. We've been in this industry about two and a half, even less than two and a half years. I don't wake up to an alarm clock. Yep. I don't answer to anybody. If I want to take a day off, there's no boss to ask. I am that person. I say today's off. Today's off. My business is still operating in the background, whether I'm there or not. Granted, when I'm there, it's running better. But it doesn't mean I'm not making money when I'm not there. The moment I chose to be and do this thing and you know be this type of person, I was retired that day. I felt free that day, way before the money came. The money is a nice byproduct of what I'm doing and who I'm being for people, but that's not the vision. And if that's the only thing you're chasing, my opinion is you're chasing the wrong thing, and that's where a lot of people get stuck because the whole thing for them is I'm successful when I make money, I'm not when I'm not, and, they, and the moment that they have an expectation in their mind and that's not met, they're gone. Yeah. But the truth about this industry is as long as you stick with it, even if it's not two years for you, even if it's five years for you, and the real stretch of things, that's nothing. Because start a new career tomorrow and tell me where you're gonna be in five years. Yeah. Nowhere. But but maybe ten thousand dollars more than exactly you're now. what from a forty thousand yeah. dollar a year job to a fifty thousand dollar a year job. That's not freedom, and you're still kissing someone's ass, and you're still asking for time off like you're a paid slave. And for me, that's disgusting. Yeah. So I can't imagine living in that world anymore. And it's really when you get here, if you've seen the Matrix, this is taking the blue pill. There's no going back. Yeah. You can't get that reality back. There's no going yeah. back before you've even had the success. I mean, like people 10 years watch ago. this video. People yeah. will watch this video. There's no going back. There's no yeah. going 90, back. Ninety-five percent of people. Yeah probably won't make that much difference. But 5% of people just from this video yeah. will be like, holy shit, I'm in a broken system. Can, yeah. can, I, can I share just a personal, like real example? And I think I shared this with you guys. Um, our, our dad worked, has had to work outside of this country mm. since losing his job, was it five, years five ago? plus years ago? So working halfway around the world. Yeah, so now for the last three years, he's been working in Vietnam. In other words, six weeks there, two weeks home. I have two kids, which means he's got two grandkids. Mm. He got to the point that it is so disgusting to him that he lives so far away, especially now with my grandkids, that he's had to come back here. But he has to come back here and he can't really find a career that will pay what he was getting over and there. And he is a, a skilled he, worker as you can get. He's w currently working on the second largest project in the world. Industrial project. Here's yeah. what I'm really, really proud of. My father came to us to ask for our help to help him build a business. Mm. And in just two and a half years of being in this industry, mm. I'm able to do that for him. Mm. So he gets to come home. I get to bring him home. We get to bring him home. So he can be home with us. Yeah, that is so. Like cool. I couldn't have dreamed of being able to do that in anything else. And if somebody would have told you two and a half years ago, oh, you got to no. go through all so this to do that. Oh, like, I mean, yeah, absolutely. But, but I couldn't imagine doing it. So we're we're talking here in the last twenty, less than twenty years ago. The most when the internet was invented is anybody's guess. In mid nineties, it yeah. seemed to uh, kind of flourish. Yeah, right? yeah. But, Mid '90s, and then by you know by 2000, you know home computers, PCs, everybody seemed to have one, mm -hmm. and mobile phones, everyone seemed to have one. You know by the late '90s, early 2000s, and then all of a sudden here we are. You know we all have you know whether it's iPhone or a BlackBerry or an Android, the tools that we have, 
yeah. that our parents didn't have, yeah. that your dad didn't have. I mean, we didn't did, have. To we be, didn't have. That we were that we didn't even have. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah. It's incredible if you think about it. And that's really the point that we're making here is that we have options today. You have options today that you didn't have five years ago, 10 yeah. years ago, 20 years ago. And that's what we want to wake you up to, yeah. essentially. We, we need you. to get onto this. You're making a great point here as well. It's like, I remember when I first started looking for a way out, a way out of the rat race, frankly. Yeah. And the problem that I experienced is the same problem as everyone experienced in there. It was either scammy, high key, oh. like get rich quick schemes, or it was so complicated yeah. that I had no idea. And you fell for all of them, just like all of us. Well, you know, I tried a couple of the get rich yeah. quick schemes, but they didn't work. They didn't work. Uh, <laughs> but um, you know, what it did do is it gave me this dream mm. of living a kind of lifestyle that certainly wasn't ever offered in the traditional world. Yeah. So let's get on to that. Let's get on to, let, rather than talking about Jay and I, we're, we're dinosaurs in the industry uh, compared to a lot of people. That's pretty let, let's, let's, uh, let's talk about you guys. So when you made that decision, you got committed, I'm going to find another way, we've lost the bank, you know, we need to do something different. What was the emotions? Before we get onto the solution, what were your emotions that you were going through? I think, and Guy's probably the best one to talk to because I know you were the one that really that started, started the whole, it, yeah. I mean, I had, so I worked, we worked together, we were in the same bank, I was a manager there, he, he brought me in after a few years, and we had grown that company pretty big, so I kind of went through the same distress, like lost my income, lost my assets, I actually moved back home for about 18 months, which, you know, like, like most curses, they end up being blessings, like I'm so thankful that all that happened, because something needed to jar me. Mm -hmm. The hell That's out such of a good point because there'll be people watching this video that feel like they're cursed right now. Yeah. Oh. Mm. And and do you know what? Like the amount of people in that room that said that being able to find another way is the first step sure. to feeling that you're getting out of that curse. Oh, so, yeah. That hope. Oh, hope. Exactly. Yeah. One of the best things that can happen to you is one of the worst things that can happen to you. Seriously, it just it's a matter of time. And unfortunately, you can never tie the thread forward. You can only see that looking backwards. Like, wow, that had to happen for this to happen. Yeah. Um, but I started because I knew, again, that I was just clear that I wanted to provide something. I think that's a little bit unusual. No, no, I can tell you, after thousands of students in jail say the same, that's pretty unusual. It's, it's un And I know that, right? And that's just kind of like the story of my life. I do things a little so bit unusual. <laughs> but, it, but, but it fits into my framework of how life works for me. I'm like ass backwards on everything. Um, but I came in and it was like, I never really felt desperation. I had $400 to my name when I started in this industry. So for those of you who are like, I don't have money, it can be, it can be done. Your desire seriously outweighs your pocketbook. Yeah. Um, mm. And I was just willing to do pretty extreme things at that time. So like, I would never do it the way that I've done it. I just, that just what I, I know I needed. I needed a, a no way out solution. That's how I felt. I was like, if I can paint myself in the corner and I give myself no choice, the only choice I have is to make this work, it'll work. So I kind of like painted myself in the corner. I wasn't big on using credit cards for a few years. I like paid everything cash. So when I got in the industry, I had a lot of credit to play with. And I said, this is my investment in myself. I never, this is one of Jay's products. This is one of Jay's products. I never, I never thought of it like an expense. I thought of it always like an investment. And it wasn't necessarily an investment like, I will see money from this. Mm -hmm. It was an investment in myself like, I will learn skills from this. Mm -hmm. And I always believe that eventually, you can't really see when it comes back to you, but it came back to me, right? <laughs> like, but it comes back in sometimes in, in intrinsic ways, sometimes financial ways, sometimes relationship. You'd never know. You yeah. just don't know. Um, but you just got to have belief and faith. Like I'm not a religious person, but I have belief and faith regardless. Um, and that's just how it was for me. So I went there. I love the mindset. I love what it took to succeed in this industry. There's a lot of industries you can be a sleazeball, like the finance industry. You can be a sleazeball. Yeah, and I'm, a, I'm real estate. I, 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 <laughs> you can be a real estate too, and you could be a multimillionaire, and you can get away with being douchey, you know, like for lack of a better word. You can't get away with that here. And even if you do, it'll be really short lived because people will see through your inauthenticity, and no one will want to be around you or work with you. And we can point to a lot of stories over the last few years. You guys. Even more probably yeah than. people who have gone down with the ship because that's how they treated their business so it's like you either want it fast and hard which usually means you step and break on a lot of people and so you'll feel the like the casino you know like I just won the, the roulette table type of thing for a really short period of time but you're not building something that's sustainable if you bring integrity and authenticity and like your word matters to you in this industry you'll have this you'll have this for the rest of your life yeah right and that's, that's how I felt about yeah, it yeah that, that is, it's, it's so rare to find people that are, you use the word altruistic, 
Um, not that you have to be altruistic, but having that authenticity and having that real intention, which is really, I mean, we, we talk about why we do what we do all the time. I mean, yeah. no, no qualms it's about it. It's all I care it. about. It's all, yeah, it's exactly. I really care about is why we do what So, we do. on that note, to our, our viewers, uh, Elon, maybe you can talk for a moment just about n not what it takes, but maybe maybe there are people that are intimidated by what we're talking about sure. just because there's this unknown. Sure. You, you don't know what you don't know. Intimidated. Yeah. Intimidated by... by <laughs> and if you're a middle-aged you know, baby boomer, whatever, yeah. um, you've invested years and years into a job, into a career, and education, all of that, you have an existing life, and, and it comes down to making a choice. What can you tell our viewers to help them understand that they can do what we're talking about, that this is within reach, that this isn't way out there in yeah. la-la land, this isn't that you know, complicated, yeah. confusing? Um, it actually isn't. And I know it's hard to take my word for it. You might be looking like, oh, well, he's young and he grew up in the digital age. But I, I kid you not, I, other than, and he will attest to this, other than being able to send emails and put things on my calendar, that was the extent of my computer skills. And me. Yeah, yeah, right? Like, yeah. Still is. <laughs> <laughs> um, what you'll find and what we shared with all those people in there, anything that you can do is easy to outsource for really, really cheap. Mm -hmm. um, all you have to learn are very simple foundational skills. It's like to build a house, like if an architect had to draw a house, right? Like if I drew a house as an architect by the way I liked it, you know, I'd make it like this cup. <laughs> and be like, an angle. Because I think that looks cool. Well, that's not structurally mm -hmm. right, yeah. safe for, for right. an architect to build a house that way. But for me, it was just about learning the foundation. But, but, on that, so, but if you wanted to be an architect, where would you go to learn those skills? I would have to go to school and probably spend like six years. School, yeah. wherever yeah. The but, we went, but if you wanted to learn digital skills, we where went would, to your school originally. Yeah. 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 We Which wasn't school. really yeah, but intended this, to be a school. It was really. This yeah. is what we need to get onto though, because people will be sat saying, where's the money coming from? Like, this is what we need to talk about the, the, the details of the solution. Like, okay. where is the money coming from? I know that's what I'd be thinking. Oh. I'd be thinking these guys are talking about. Like not what, having a what boss, we do? Never commuting, living the life where they can travel around the world. Like what we do? With my, yeah. You know okay. what? Like, let's, let's, let's I, I, I actually do want you to answer that question. I don't want to answer that question, but I do want to give framework, guys. Like we said, like where do you go? Why do you even go? At the end of the day, it's not even about the skills. I was just thinking as you said that. I'm like, you know what? The skills aren't even important. What's important is mastering distinctions. And if you think about anything, why do you go to school? To learn a new language. When you're an attorney, what are you doing? You're mastering distinctions. When you're a doctor, you're mastering distinctions. Or in real estate. Those, di distinctions. those distinctions that you're learning give you access to different actions that you didn't know were possible right. prior to having those distinctions. Yeah. Our industry or our business or our digital economy, whatever you want to call it, it's no different. You come here to master new distinctions that give you access to the planet. Yeah. to communicating with the world. And that really is what Digital Experts Academy is. It's teaching those distinctions, yeah. those skills, to give you the access points to your future life. Yeah. Yeah. And your best life is an extension of your current life. Yeah. Take what you have and you build on it yeah. by learning new distinctions, new skills, yeah. etc. I mean, it's not about the, you know, your life options aren't as good as they could be. Your sure. life sucks, my life sucks, I'm 12. The other reality is, is that 20 years ago, there was this percentage of the economy online. Um, now we're into you know, double digits. Yeah. In 20, 30% of all spending is online. There's been a divergence. There are two economies. Yeah. Yeah. And we are at the ground floor of that. And that's also where the sense of urgency comes from. Mm. Well, you know, since the 80s, when the digital revolution started, the, there is a second economy, yeah. and that's what we're talking about. Yeah. So it's not even about being driven by pain or having options, and, and yeah, you should do because it's, because it's a good choice or good option. There's a booming digital economy yeah. that you could be playing in like a playground, yeah. almost. Like this, this, this world world playground. I have really, really well, like, I know, you, you a lot of points, point. I know. So, <laughs> so I want to just answer Stu's question, because so we're talking about well, what is it, right? Like, well, what the hell? Uh, that's what do? people are going to want to know. That's what people are going to want to know. All the other stuff, they're like, oh, whatever, I got it. Passion and yeah. events and like yeah. gurus and like making money online. So let's like, make it let's, real let's simple. Let's make it real. You were just talking. There's a booming economy online, right? 
there's not a single person out there right now, maybe there's two of you, that have not bought something online. Mm. Every single one of us have bought something online. Sure. Amazon, Overstock, Staples, eBay, some store that you love. We have gotten used to buying things online. It is just a fact. Mm. And now with mobile, we're buying more and more. Well, everything that you bought, someone's made money off of, that's not the actual store. Every single thing, mm. whether it's a phone, a cup, a table, a microphone, a camera, a light. Someone was the intermediary to get you to that product. Even if it's just the merchant account. Just the merchant account, exactly. Yeah, so what if you could learn how to put this cup in front of the person that wants to buy that cup? Let's use Amazon as an example, because this is something everybody yeah, knows. So let's say that we want to sell this cup on yeah, Amazon. Exactly. So let's explain, like, somebody is going to buy this, this glass yep. on Amazon. Exactly. So they want to buy this glass well, on Amazon. Let's make a point. Amazon has no product, other than the Kindle, is their only product. Yeah. It's all other people's products. Yeah, so Amazon is by affiliates. Well, all these companies. Walmart's lunch, because... Yeah. Same with eBay. Right. Netflix. Amazon, eBay. Them. They are marketplaces. So think of like a like a farmer's market or like a, a market in, in you know in a town square. That's a right? great. That's it's a great. It's a digital warehouse. Great thing. So now it's a digital warehouse. Say I know that Amazon is a marketplace, mm -hmm. and Stu comes to me and says, "Hey, listen, Elon, I'm dying to get this leaning cup, <laughs> leaning tower of glass. I want to feel like I'm drunk. Well, I'm drunk. I am going to say, "Hey, Stu, why don't you go to this marketplace? Because mm -hmm. I know." That they have these specific so I can cups. access it on my phone. Yeah, for very cheap. Mm -hmm. And Stu's gonna be like, that makes right. perfect sense. He goes there. When he goes there and purchases that cup, I will make a commission based mm -hmm. off of that purchase. Which is called a referral fee. Which is called a referral fee. Or or it's it's marketing, yeah. right? Now, I know that you like that cup. No, I don't know actually. <laughs> <laughs> but I also know that that's not the only cup you're going to use. So I'm thinking, okay, Stu's shopping for cups. There might be other cups that he likes. Maybe he wants a red cup. Yeah, in London, by the way, or the UK, I should say, that's definitely a glass. It's not glass, so okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I would actually be able to monetize every time that you bought another glass. Because or another cup, he's or another linked plate. to you through your unique affiliate ID as your. Your customer. What's an affiliate ID? I've referred him. <laughs> I've referred him. Exactly. So, but seriously, what is an affiliate ID? Because I know people will be thinking, affiliate ID, what is an affiliate an ID? An affiliate ID is your unique identification or your unique um, identity as an affiliate. And it's a big, long gibberish code, essentially. <laughs> and and uh, if you look at... A website link. It's a link. Yeah, to right. it's a, if you go to you know, on your browser, all that stuff that's up there in the address One, two, bar, zero, six, science. Yeah, question that. mark, exclamation <laughs> mark, all of that. It's all embedded in that. Yep. And anything that he buys from this link that he clicked on for this glass, whether it's an additional glass, whether it's another 10 of these or two dozen of these, or you know a box set of you know, cutlery or silverware, yep. you're gonna get credit for that. Yeah, it's, it's coded, it's basically it's coded, coded to the person doing the right. referral. Yeah. Okay, and so what we've established is, frankly, is that all of us changed our lives from the traditional economy into this new digital economy by learning how to sell stuff Online, we're first that's, stuff, that's, yeah. Yeah. Not even, and not even our stuff. Yeah, that's that the best stuff. part. We're, we're even the ones doing the selling. Anything. Yeah, it's we're just, just like, referring. Yeah. yeah. So you've got Amazon, which is the marketplace. So that's the equivalent of Town Square. Yeah. It just it's there. Yeah. You've got the merchants. You know, merchants hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago, to sell silk and linens yeah. and you know, pottery and and, and cutlery and, and silverware and all those things. The merchants had to sail. To China to get the silk, they had to get on a, you know, so they, they had to trek across the desert with their camels to halt and you know, bring the goods back to trade trade those goods. We, we are the modern day merchants, is what we are. Yeah. But the cool thing is, we don't have to actually get on a camel or uh, <laughs> you know, a ship <laughs> unless you go and, and get the goods. We don't have to be in the well, import. We, export for example, business. we sell in over 170 countries. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. You know. Yeah. Exactly. From here, from yeah. from the UK, and, from. And, and I just want to so, make one quick distinction, real quick, is that I know we did the example like in a physical product, <clears throat> but truly, like it can be anything. Right. And and, and virtual and, educational products is actually, from what I understand, right, the the largest market. market. It's yeah. the biggest market. Exchange so, of, of data, exchange of information. Any any purchase that exists online for, for even an informational product, ebook, an yeah. ebook or something, we're still able to channel that and become kind of that mm -hmm. 
sales so, rep in the market. So, so, so in layman terms, what we're saying is the solution for you know going from the traditional economy into this new digital economy, living life in your own terms, ending the commute, not having a boss, being able to write your own paycheck, is effectively learning the skill sets of how to sell stuff online. Yep. That's, yep. that's the layman term. That's why the layman sellers yeah. online, which is what merchants do. They yep. connect. You have a want or a need. Yep. You're looking for information. You're looking for a product, a solution, whatever. And here's the supply. Here's the solution. Here's the book. Here's the product, whatever. And you're simply making that connection, yep. identifying wants and needs that people have yep. Yep. and connecting them, by connecting buyers and sellers. Yep. And the thing is, it works in every industry. Yep. It's like any, you can have a passion. Any country. You can be passionate about sport, <laughs> diet, health, wealth, fitness. You know anything that you're passionate about. Beauty. Yep. You can go and sell like beauty products. You know you can go and sell physical products. You Jewelry, can sell. You can anything. have. You can hold events. You know, and you can find your customers online. Super quick. I want to take this offline for like to bring it to the base level where most people will understand yeah. this. Imagine doing that same thing offline. Mm -hmm. You would have to go. Go into the classifieds or go online monster, career builder, whatever. Find a, a place mm -hmm. that has a call center. Go and interview. Get that job. Sit there. Get trained right by them how to sell this particular product, where the market is, who you call, whatever. Now have to sell that product, probably make some crappy commission while the company takes most of the profits. And then you wake up the next day and go, I don't like that. After you've gone through that whole process. Now, in our industry, we can do that. But except I wake up tomorrow and I go, I'm going to sell knives today. I wake up the next day, I don't got to go on an interview. I want to sell cups today. I want to sell Netflix today. I want to sell products on Amazon today. I want to sell information today. Every day I can wake up and go through that process instantly. Instantly, at a drop of a hat, without having to go sit down and go through that crap and be at the whim of some company while they're ripping me off and taking my commission yep. on my hard work. You don't got to do that. But you know, before we were talking about distinctions, and I wanted to say, like, so you might be sitting there wondering, like, why would you work with people like us? Why not just go on Google and type in whatever you want to type in? And I would tell you this, like, go online and say, I want to learn how to speak Russian, okay? And you're going to find videos that are going to teach you how to speak Russian, but you're not immersed. You're not immersed. You're not living in Russia. You don't probably don't have Russian friends that you can practice and speak with. You want to learn distinctions. You got to put yourself in an environment where those distinctions, with the experts, you've where got the ex extinctions, ex uh, uh, distinctions exist every single day, and you can have an exchange based on those distinctions. So you can create a mindset and have perspective based on those people. And if you've ever learned a language, you know that you don't understand that culture until you understand their language. And you won't understand our culture until you speak our language. Mm -hmm. And that's why you gotta come to an environment like this, be in a community like this. Whatever it is you choose, whether it's to come work with us or something else speaks to you, whatever it is for you, I don't care. I mean, you know, we love what we do, we know our mission, we know what we're passionate about, and if you align with that, I urge you to come talk to us or come talk to someone in this community. Mm -hmm. But that's the point. Mm -hmm. You gotta get immersed. And that's why you go back to school with us so that we can teach you the distinctions, we can give you immersion, we can put you in community, we can give you that support, and when you're down and you're thinking like, I don't wanna do this anymore, we can kick you in the ass so that you keep on going. Mm -hmm. Because without that, Chances are you're not going to succeed. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Examiner.com, you probably yeah, aware, absolutely. wrote an, an incredible review just recently. Around, that um, a review of Digital Experts Academy on nice. who we are and, and, and what we do. And you know, from their standpoint, the way they compared it is, you know, if you go to a traditional education or traditional educational institution, um, you're learning from teachers, mm. professors, people who've been trained to teach, mm. and that works to a certain degree. But with the online world, the digital economy, with, with what we're doing, you really have no choice but to find the people that are actually the pioneers, yep. that are actually doing it themselves. In the trenches. In, in the yeah. trenches. And not just doing it, but, but doing it in a holistic way where they've created a sustainable life for themselves, where they've actually patterned it, patternized it, I don't know if that's even a word, or we systematized it. it. Uh, yeah, we're <laughs> trying to trademark that as well while we're at it. But we've... We have enough experience. We've done this enough. I mean, I started ten years ago in online marketing. Which is like I mean, forever. That was industry. actually Google was in in its infancy. I mean, I was using Overture, which was the precursor to Yahoo. Mm. Yeah. I mean, that was less than ten years ago. Crazy. And, and the vision that we have is simply to teach people what we already know, and we know a lot. You've got it you guys collectively I mean, have created, I can't even imagine how many six-figure earners over the last, so our students have earned tens but, but more, of millions you know what of dollars. I'm more proud of, of like, anything is, is the diversity. Like, oh. in there, we have probably 40 people over 45 yeah. in their 50s. 
you know, and these are the people, learning, absorbing, so these, these, these are the skills. people that say that they can't do this because they assume they can't do this because this internet thing yeah. started <laughs> like after their time. You yeah, know, they weren't, you know, learning the internet in school. Um, I mean, let's face it, technology has a way of making everyone feel dumb, including me. Yeah. There's not a single, <laughs> seems like a single event or a webinar where we can't it, it, it get something to work, whether yeah. it's the, you know, the online platform, the software, technology, you know, your, your iPhone, the projector in the room here yesterday, we're like yeah. fiddling with the buttons. <laughs> technology has a way of making us all feel insecure yeah. and making us all feel inferior. Like there's something wrong with us. Why can't I get this? Why am I so dumb? And it brings out the worst self-affirmations, at least it does for me. And I've never considered myself technologically savvy. My younger brother, he's an engineer. He's a programmer. He, he, he lives and speaks in code language. He's a, like, way beyond me. Mm. Jay, I can confirm as, technically you're horrible. I, I'm not <laughs> that <laughs> technically savvy. I'm just not. <laughs> but what and I... And Dewey Lance. And Dewey Lance. Yeah, 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 yeah. I and I are probably bored. Like, I'm more so than me, but I mean, I'm bored. And it doesn't matter. <laughs> no, it, it doesn't, doesn't matter. matter but because this, but you'll this. learn to use the tools. Yeah. And the beautiful thing about what we've created is we've created the turnkey solutions yeah. so that you don't have to create exactly. these for yourselves. Exactly. And that ultimately is what puts this goofy grin on my face because I know what we have. Yeah. And what it is, is the golden goose of the 21st century. Is what it is. And it's the strategy as much yeah. as the tools and the systems, the training. And you the know. culture. I mean, Guy, would you agree with me when I say what's more important when it comes to you know, being successful online, it, it's strategy more than any tactic, any technical know-how. So if, if it was about technology, computer programs would all be millionaires. That's that yeah. a if, really good point. If it was about, if it was about, you know, being a, a, a computer designer or a tech, or sorry, a web designer, and you could have graphic design degrees, and they'd all be millionaires. Yeah. So the end of the day, sorry. you know, <laughs> no, actually, guy, I want I want you to elaborate on, you know, this whole concept of just getting the strategy yeah. and then making it happen. You know, I, the thing that just stuck out for me, what you said is, and you didn't even notice that you said it, I just want to point to the languaging that you used. You said being successful. You didn't say doing success, mm. right? You pointed to what I was elaborating before, which was there's a big difference between doing and getting results and who you're being as a function and like that that's what's leading to results. Because honestly, if you guys are paying attention and why we're so inspired, it has nothing to do with what we've done. Nobody's here is like, yay, I learned how to build a landing page, or yay, I learned how to drive some traffic, or yay, I'm selling stuff. It's so not about that. If you listen, you really listen to what's in this room, what this whole video is about, is who we get to be as a function of what, you know, like, it's not even a function of what we're doing. What we're doing is a function of who we're being. So when you're talking about being successful, that mindset is there way before the doing ever happens. It's not about the tech skills. These two are, are literally tech retarded. They're, they are like I was, very PC. Like <laughs> I'm sorry, you know that's 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 how it is. You want me to be real? I'm being real. So that that's what I would tell you guys. It's like you think it's about what you're doing and all that stuff, but at the end of the day, if you're willing to bring your authentic self, literally, into this business, into this world, and that's all people care about. You can be depressed. You can be angry. You can be whatever you want to be. You can be happy. You can be goofy. You can be crazy. You will find people who love that. And you can change their lives. But the point I want to make, though, is that you know, I think the potential for people to have been successful, let's say 25 years ago, was significantly less for more than just the internet. The cost of the opportunity. And this yeah. is something we need to be really clear on, because the reality is, is that you and I, you guys, might not have been here if it had been 25 years ago making millions of dollars on the internet. Sure. For the simple reason that the, it would cost most people not just risk, or not just money I should say, but also risk. Yeah. A franchise in the UK, something like Nando's or in the US, I know you have like McDonald's franchise. Yeah, yeah. You're talking like three quarters of a million to get started. And that's, a, that's like- Minimum. That's normal. That's, that's, like, like, that's, that's, that's a crappy that's, location. That's, yeah, yeah, exactly. And this is the thing that's separated everything. You know, I got started online with debt, uh, no skill sets, uh, quite frankly, the wrong mindsets, um, but I was still able to make it work. And I think I can attribute a lot of that to, yes, I took action, but for the fact that, you know what, the startup capital wasn't a barrier. Yeah. And I think this is something that is so underestimated because I see two types of people. Either people come online and think I can make money online and I'm not gonna invest anything. Yeah. 
no time, no money, push a button and make yeah. money. And there's the get rich quick schemes out there, yeah. which frankly, uh, I, I fell for uh, a couple we of times. <laughs> um, but it was more from a point of view of being intrigued than anything. I never thought it would actually work. Yeah. I was just intrigued. And because the internet was so new, it was quite, kind of like this element of like a lottery mentality. Like, yeah. what if? It was like this, yeah. what if? Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think that you know anyone with any common sense uh, in 2013, 2014 um, knows that it's not going to have to be something where you push a button. You know, I think, I it, I think it would have probably uh, would have bailed the governments out by now. I think <laughs> it was that simple. But the point that I'm making is, is that or everyone would be doing it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But the point that I'll make is that if you come into this industry of when I say industry, if you come into this world of making money on the internet, all you really need, if we're you know really breaking it down, is is the action to actually take action. Yeah. The, the mentality to persevere, because it's like anything, you're going to have to persevere when learning anything new. Yeah. And you have to go into this treating it like a business, not a hobby. Yeah. You know, and I know that's what distinguished me compared to a lot of people that I used to talk to. Like when I first got started, I met on, online and on forums and would chat about my new business venture. Yeah. You know, most of them came in with the attitude of, I'll give it a whirl. Yeah, I'll try it. I'll give it a go. Yeah. And I don't think giving it a go is good enough in any aspect of life, yeah. whether it's your marriage, whether it's getting healthy and fit, or whether it be making money. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that that's a really good point. And when I think back to when I got started, I tried things too. But the reason I tried them is because I didn't really know if it would work. Mm. And, and it's tough to really commit to something if you don't know if it's going to work. Because the claims were just insane. Yeah. And it was just out of my realm of, of possibility. Yeah. So I, I tried it. Uh, to see if it would work, and they didn't work. But through trial and error over the years, I was able to find traction and make things work and build a business. And then in 2007, 2008, when, when Stuart got started as well, we, we, we shifted our focus to teaching other people to do what we were doing. Why? Because there was nothing else out there right. that gave people a legitimate education, yeah. the skills, almost like a vocation, to know how to do what we're doing. This, the skills, we have the strategy, but, but the actual skills as well. And that's really what the vision behind Digital Experts Academy is, is to be this structure where you can come and learn those skills. But it's actually more than that because we've eliminated most of these variables that people struggle with. Yeah. Most of the things that you normally have to learn have been eliminated for you yeah. because we do them for you. And that is so cool. I mean, you could even compare this to being the modern day franchise model. Yeah, where you're sure. really, it's a cookie cutter system sure. where you're taking proven systems and strategies where there's, I mean, if you look at our, our community, hundreds of years, hundreds of years, probably thousands of years of collective experience. Yeah. Uh, tens of millions of dollars of earnings over the last, you know, less than 10 years. And we just get better and better because we're at the cutting edge of, of what we're doing. Mm. So I want people to understand, I want you to understand that you can do this by yourself. You can figure it out yourself like we did. You can follow the gurus, the, um, the, you know, the people making the big claims, and you can go down that path. Or you can, you can make a commitment to yourself to take your time and acquire the skills. Yeah. And do a gut check and ask yourself, am I willing to invest in my future? Yeah. Where will I be in five years? Where will I be in 10 years mm -hmm. if I don't change? And where, you know, where do I want to be? Who do I want to be? Not so much what do I want to be, but who do I want to become? Yeah. Who do I want to be for my family? What kind of legacy do I want to leave? What kind of lifestyle do I want? And look at all of your options. So with that, Guy, I know you have something you'd like yeah, to say. I mean, here's, here's, my, here's my parting words to you guys. I want to give you two, two sides of the same coin, you know, because a lot of people still look at this industry, they think scammy, hypey, and there's all these words that get thrown around and people are very adverse to them. And I agree with you. It, it was that way. I remember years ago, there was like that, like before FTC jumped on Google, there was like this big Google scam out there and then they came down on them. And, and that's true. People were making outlandish claims, but it was like the they wild thing. Off. And then they yeah, are. But it's like unfortunately, the, it was like the wild west, and it's like the wild west is kind of ending online. Just like when TV first got started, there was outlandish claims on TV too. Smoking was healthy for you, right? Like they used to say that on TV until regulation came in, and there's like laws put in place to do that. So the industry is slowly legitimizing, you could say, and that's going. And we're proud to be at that forefront. Of Absolutely, that. and, and that's go, and that's going away. So and like because of people like us. On the other side of that. 
that you know, with, with the advent of more and more technology, things that were once at the corporate level that only corporations had power to do, like outsourcing, have now come down to the personal power. You know, like think about just a few years ago, uh, before you know, iMacs got big or MacBook Pros got big. You can do movie editing on your computer now. You can do music editing. You can do music production at home by spending just a few thousand dollars. Once that was a full studio at your house and one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Today it costs. Pennies on the dollar. A camera on your phone exactly. is better than a, a, a ten thousand dollar camera exactly. ten years ago. Exactly. Exactly. It's more powerful than the space mission. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. They flew to the moon with less technology. So my point here is, is that things have come down to the yeah. ground level, and a lot of you guys don't realize that. So this whole conversation is not convincing anyone of anything. It's more of an invitation. It's a wake up. It's a wake up and an invitation to come be part of a new type of conversation. If you guys, you know, you can use your instinct. You can believe us. You cannot believe us. It really won't make that big of a difference for us. We didn't make this video for us. We made this video for you, right? So that, and like you look in our eyes, listen to the way we're speaking. If this doesn't sound like passion to you, I don't know. I guess we just check your heart. Yeah, we, <laughs> we, maybe we missed the mark. I don't know. But like, you know, it's an invitation to become part of a conversation that adds something to your life, especially we're talking about quality of life. It adds that element. It adds your creativity back into your life. Think about how stifled you probably feel, how unexpressed you probably feel, how powerless and no freedom you feel in your life. And if you want those things, if those things are important to you, we're telling you, here's your access to it. You know, that's, that's where you come and, and get here. One point I just want to make is that this is the very reason that we talk with our customers on the phone. All the time. Okay, and the reason that we talk with our customers on the phone is because, frankly, doing this industry, the industry of making money on the internet, quite frankly, isn't for everyone. It absolutely isn't for everyone. And one of the things that I am so proud about, what we've been able to achieve, is the fact that we have a trained team of people who are... And, you know, have got the skills and the mindsets and the understanding to make an informed decision from a yeah. conversation with the thousands of prospects that we receive every single month to whether th this is actually a journey right. they should even take in the yeah. first place. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, that's what we'll do. And I want to make that point is that regardless of what option you take to check us out, um, you're going to go through a process where we're going to get on the phone with you. Um, and we're actually going to help you make an informed decision to whether this is even right or not. Right, so that you can make the best decision for yourself. Elon, what would you say to someone who is contemplating, wondering, is this true? What are these guys talking about? I'm not. I can really only speak from my kind of personal experience. So you asked me earlier, and it just kind of kept reverberating in my brain. You know, I when I lost everything, I had a child in the way, <coughs> and house was being foreclosed on, um, things were not looking good. And I remember thinking, I could either go get a 50, 60, $75,000 job and just make ends meet. And luckily I had an amazing wife who was like, no, go find your passion. And I read a blog like a few years later and the, the number one regret of most, it was mostly males, ironically enough, said that the number one regret they have is they didn't spend enough time with their family and their kids. And I honestly feel like the most blessed human being. I have a two-year-old at home. I have a seven-month-year-old at home. I get to play with them every single day. Even if I made really is. a tenth of the income I make today, I would still feel like I have the best life. It is so not about the money. There, you know, to wrap this whole thing up, there are options out there. I know I'm a product of them. I, I know because I spoke to, you know, 50, 60 people in there who have these options now. Just check it out for yourself. Like, don't end this video and not at and least wonder. give yourself the opportunity yeah. of whatever you think you can't, it's too difficult, I'm overwhelmed. I'm confused. Just open yourself up to at least the possibility of a brand new life that you can start right now on your terms on your terms how you want it to be so from that's where you important. are with your current job and that's that's my invitation just come yeah. talk to us absolutely yeah. see if this is right for you and, and i really i look forward to connecting with every one of you and speaking to you and seeing you yeah. you know the next with us. Yeah. so thank you so much you guys bring your hearts on your sleeve like Literally. Thank you. Not really, but literally. <laughs> if you think about it, you just bring it and love you for that. Thank you for that. And, and that place of service where you're coming from, it's just, um, it's palpable. You can feel it. I can feel it. I'm sure our viewers can feel it as well. 
Uh, and it reminds me, I want to close with this. Um, a year or two ago at, at one of our events, a best-selling author, Simon Sinek, mm -hmm. he wrote Start With Why. You know, he, um, he made an invitation to the audience, and, and, and he really was not involved in what we do. We brought him in as a speaker, but he said, this is a movement, because he saw what we were doing. He's like, this is a movement. Who's in? And the thing about a movement, and I don't know if a movement is really the right word, I, I doubt it, but the thing about a movement is it's a group of people going somewhere. Yeah. And a group of people in this case is a community. Yep. You know, we're a community. At the end of the day, we're a community. We're a family. And communities are something that fascinate me personally. I'm mm. very passionate about the concept of community because a community is something that lasts forever. Mm. You know, you can't choose your family, but you can choose your friends. Yeah. And a community is composed basically of friends. Mm. And we're friends. Absolutely. And our, our members are our friends mm. and our family because of that. So, so with that, like, like Guy and Alon and, and Stuart said here, come check us out and then decide for yourself. So with that, we hope you've enjoyed this conversation. And we look forward to your success, and, and we hope they make the decision that's right for you. So, cheers, and again, thank you. Bye, guys. We'll be here when you're ready. <laughs>